All right, Dr. B, the topic of the microbiome gut health is simply blowing up on the internet. It's everywhere. And it seems that people are beginning to understand the importance of having optimal gut health and hence watching what they eat. So what exactly is the microbiome and how does one's microbiome health affect their chronic disease risk? Sure. Uh, to summarize as efficiently as I can, Robbie, the microbiome is a community of microorganisms, 39 trillion microorganisms, more than there are human cells in your body. In fact, if you were to count up the cells in your body that actually have a nucleus and the different organelles that we learned about in biology in high school, you would have basically 10 times more bacterial and microbial cells than you do actual human cells in your body. And so this community of microorganisms, they're not just kind of passively there along for the ride. They actually have taken up residence as a part of us. There's never been a moment in human history, in our evolutionary history, that they were not a part of the human story. They have been with us through the good times, through the bad times. They've helped us to survive and they have taken up a role in our body that is actually critical to human health. And it goes far beyond digestion, which they are very, very important for. They are like, you are literally incapable of processing fiber without them. You cannot do anything with fiber without your microbes. But with your microbes, you can take fiber and transform it into the most amazing postbiotics, which we can talk about in more detail in a few moments. But it goes beyond just digestion. Um, it actually connects to our immune system. 70% of our immune system lives within our gut. It connects to our metabolism, um, our hormonal balance, uh, you know, insulin included within that package, satiety hormones included within that package, but even you know, hormones that make us more masculine or more feminine, estrogen, testosterone. Um, it connects to our genetics, 99% of our genetic code is actually of microbial orange origin. Uh, if you were to look at your gene pool, you are 1% human and 99% microbial when it comes to your genes, 1% human. So, so back up here, if you don't mind me cutting you off here for a second, you said from a cellular perspective, we are 10% human, meaning that 90% of the, cellular population of a human being is bacterial and 10% are cells that contain a nucleus. But when it comes from, from a DNA perspective, or from a genetic perspective, we are 1% human and 99% bacterial. Is that right? Yeah, we're even less than 1% human, actually. It's more like 0.5% to be a little more precise, because I know that you appreciate precision, Cyrus. <laughs> that, so, is, but... <laughs> that, is, that is fascinating. Honestly, I mean, there's many things about human health which fascinate me, but that fact into unto itself is blows my mind. Right. And they have the ability to regulate our genetic expression as well. Right. So there's a reason why you are not personally pre-programmed to develop certain disease. We can't just look at your genetic code and know what's going to happen to you during your lifetime. That's not the way that it works. There's other influences that determine what you, what you will actually develop from a health and disease perspective. And our microbiome has a lot to say with the way that this plays out, the way that this story plays out, which makes a lot of sense because basically the imprint of your microbiome, it's your microbiome is as unique as your fingerprint. There is literally no one on the planet who has a microbiome exactly like you. And your microbiome is essentially a reflection of your lifestyle, predominantly the food that you eat, but so much more than that, your exercise, your sleep, the amount of stress that you carry, the time that you spend socializing with other people, surrounding yourself with other people, all of these different things have an influence on your microbial makeup. And then that microbial makeup has a powerful effect on health throughout the entire body. Is it true to say that the food people eat has the biggest impact on their microbiome health? 100%. Um, that's an easy answer. 100%. Look at that cat. That was really cool. Um, the food that you eat is the number one determinant. And here's the reason why, Robbie. Most of your microbiome is in your colon. 
the vast majority of your microbiome. You do have a skin microbiome. You have a microbiome in your mouth. Um, there is a minor amount of microbiome living in your stomach, living in your small intestine, minor amount. The majority is in your colon. Women also have a vaginal microbiome. And so what passes through the colon? The food that you eat on a daily basis. And the average person in the United States eats about three pounds of food per day, a thousand pounds of food per year. If you live an average life expectancy, that's, that's 80,000 pounds of food during your lifetime. And that is ultimately what determines the makeup of your microbiome. And we have studies that show us that literally with a dietary change in less than 24 hours, there can be radical changes to your microbiome as a result of changing your diet. Wow. Okay. So which foods actually promote the best gut health possible? Well, I think to answer that question, I would, let, let's just cut straight to what I would classify as one of the most important microbiome studies to date. This is not cherry picking. This is literally one of the most micro, most important microbiome studies to date. It comes from Nature, in, in, uh, which is the journal, the top scientific journal, literally on the entire planet. If we cure cancer tomorrow, this is where we're going to publish it. The year was 2014. The lead author was Lawrence David and Peter Dar Turnbaugh, who's a very prominent, well-respected microbiome researcher, was also one of the authors of this paper. And basically what they did is they took a group of people and they put them on a completely 100% plant-based diet for five days, tracked their microbiome day by day by day, and then they flipped them over and they went over to a completely animal product-based diet you can call it the carnivore diet. Like literally, that's what it was. It was meat, eggs, and dairy. That's it. And so they ate that completely animal-based diet. And again, track their microbiome day by day by day by day. And what they noticed were profound changes in the microbiome in literally less than 24 hours after making these dietary changes. And when you eat the plant-based diet, what you see is the emergence of very healthy anti-inflammatory bacteria, bacteria that actually are very skilled at helping us to unpack fiber and to release the health promoting benefits of our fiber in the form of something that is called short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are produced when healthy microbes basically consume dietary fiber and release Acetate, propionate, butyrate. Those are three examples of short chain fatty acids that will be released from dietary fiber. So in this study, when you were on the plant-based diet, you got more eubacterium, more roseberia. These are specific types of microbes that are known to produce short chain fatty acids. And guess what? There are studies, we want to, let's just get right into type two diabetes with this. There are studies that show us, in fact, in fact, there was one that just came out, published in Nature, that showed us that the gut microbiome is actually causative in type 2 diabetes. That it's not just changed as a result of type 2 diabetes, that it actually is a critical part of the pathogenesis of the condition. And in that study, what they found that was critical were these specific bacteria that by the way, were found back in 2014 in this Nature article, Eubacterium, Roseburia, which produce short chain fatty acids. In this most recent study that came out, they found diminished levels of those specific types of bacteria, which lead to lower levels of short chain fatty acids. So when, when they did this study back in 2014, basically what you see is that a plant-based diet is anti-inflammatory, health promoting, and then when they flipped them over to the animal-based diet, just to cut to the chase real quick, you don't see eubacterium, you don't see roseburia. Instead, what you see is the emergence of inflammatory microbes, some of which, one specific one called Biophil wadsworthia, has been clearly associated with the development of inflammatory bowel disease. So literally in less than five days, you see emergence of inflammatory microbes on an animal-based diet. And you see essentially the, the constructs or the foundation of inflammatory bowel disease being laid. You're not going to develop it in five days on this diet. But if you have the right genetic milieu, the right genetic profile, you have 
set the stage for the development of inflammatory bowel disease with that diet.